What's up everyone, welcome to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel. Today is gonna to be video 19 in my from zero to $2,000 per month series. And I'm gonna be going over seasonal content and how you can improve your seasonal content marketing strategy. You can find all of my previous videos on YouTube on my playlist from zero to 2K, free digital marketing training. And I'll put the link for this video in the video description so you can easily find it and watch any of the other videos. So coming back over here, to start, there's two types of seasonal content. There's holidays and events, and there's seasonal trends. So to give you an example of each of them, I'll start with holidays and events. So in 2019, so right now I opened up Google Search Console for farmhousegoals.com, and in 2019 I was creating a lot of Christmas content for farmhouse goals because I realized farmhouse Christmas decor and all sorts of keywords related to farmhouse Christmas, if I can create content around those keywords, then I can start ranking for them and selling more products during the holiday season. So that's exactly what I did. And you can see right here the trend line that happened from November, and then you can see into December, and I was able to drive well over a thousand clicks and a lot of Christmas sales by creating Christmas content. So just scrolling down the page here, you can see some of the search queries I was ranking for, Ray Dunn Christmas, Farmhouse Christmas stockings, ornaments, wreaths, pillow covers. So those were all specific pages on my website as well. So if we come over here to pages and look which pages drove the most clicks and impressions, you can see my product category for Ray Dunn Christmas, my blog post for Farmhouse Christmas ornaments, Farmhouse Christmas signs. So those were all pieces of content that I created in anticipation of the search volume that came from those keywords. So by using keyword research and looking up some of the top keywords related to Farmhouse Christmas, I was able to create content and I was able to rank high in Google and drive a lot of traffic back to my website. So coming back over here, that is a good example for holidays and events. You'll also see a lot of companies around different holidays, whether it's Halloween, Thanksgiving, 4th of July. There's a lot of different ways to activate your brand around those different types of seasons to make sure you're taking advantage of seasonal traffic. The other thing is events, and one of the best examples is the Super Bowl. So if you're Buffalo Wild Wings or any of these major brands, major chain restaurants that kind of take advantage of football traffic, you're going to use the Super Bowl to highlight deals to try to get people in the door to watch the game. So different ways to use holidays and events. And then the other one is seasonal trends. So for this, I'm going to come over to the Google Keyword Planner and give you an example of what I did for BeachfrontDecor.com. So starting with keywords, one of the main keywords I found through my research was beach chairs. So pretty obvious, most people are searching for beach chairs in the spring and summer. So you can see right here the trend line, so April, and you can see it really peaks in June, a lot of search traffic in July, but you can get plenty in May, June, July, and even into August. So what I did was I created a ton of beach chair content for beachfront decor. And if we come over here to Google Search Console for Beachfront Decor, you can see looking at April 1st, 2020 to September 30th, 2020, I was able to drive almost 2,000 clicks according to Google Search Console if we're just looking at search queries that contain beach chairs. So it helped me drive a lot of additional traffic back to my website and a lot of that traffic turned into sales. And if we come and scroll down to the bottom here, you can see per pages, I created a blog post for Tommy Bahama Beach Chairs. That alone drove over 1,000 clicks. So if I never decided to create content around beach chairs, I would have probably never sold any beach chairs at all and I wouldn't have gotten any of this traffic to my website. So it's a great way to drive more revenue by taking advantage of specific holidays, events, and seasons. You can see here, if I come over to search queries, you can see Tommy Bahama beach chairs drove a ton of clicks for me. And then there's a bunch down here too. And these were all different pages that I made on my website. And you can see the effectiveness of long tail keywords like a Tommy Bahama backpack beach chairs can drive plenty of clicks over several months. So while we're optimizing for a keyword like beach chairs or like Tommy Bahama beach chairs, there's plenty of long tail keywords that will help us drive traffic and drive some of those additional sales, which leads to more money for our business. So coming back over here, that's a little overview of holidays and events and seasonal trends, different ways you can take advantage of different time periods during the year and what people are looking for. So coming over here, number one, I recommend researching your holiday and event keywords using the Google Keyword Planner and Google Trends. So the example I'm gonna be using today are Wicker Easter Baskets. And I'm gonna start in Google Trends. So if I open up Google Trends for Wicker Easter Baskets, you can see here I'm just looking at the search term for Wicker Easter Baskets in the United States over the past five years, and you can see interest over time. So what I like to look for is when the interest peaks for specific keywords. So if we come over here, you can see there's a peak March 5th to March 11th. If 
we come over to 2018, February 25th to March 3rd. If we come over here, it's March 24th to 30th. So really what I want is by the middle of February to be completely optimized, to have everything published. And really you wanna do it much earlier than that. So I'm creating this video in March, so it's already too late for me to really capitalize on Wicker Easter Baskets, but it doesn't mean I shouldn't still create this page and try to start getting this page ranking, so then by next year I can fully take advantage of people looking for Wicker Easter Baskets. My goal is to create the best buying guide for Wicker Easter Baskets on the internet, and I'm going to show you how I do that. So we'll keep coming over and looking at some of these seasonal trends and you can see right now it is peaking and so it's at its absolute peak for search volume for wicker easter baskets it's march 14th to 20th so i missed out on this date because i haven't created this content yet but really it's just a matter of having a new website and probably not going to be ranking too high anyway based on some of the competitors on the first page of google so the other thing i like to do is look at google to look for search trends and what you can do is use keywords everywhere so I highly recommend using this Chrome plugin, Keywords Everywhere. They have a completely free version you can install using Google Chrome. And then every time you make a search, you're gonna see this information over on the right-hand side. And you can see here where it's peaking all time. And it might be a little bit different. So maybe you wanna look at five years again. But again, you can see this data right here using Keywords Everywhere. And then as we cert, come down here a little bit, we can see what people also searched for. We can scroll down, we can see a bunch of long tail keyword ideas. And I'm gonna use all of these long tail keyword ideas as I create content. So coming back over here, that's how you can use trends and a plugin like Keywords Everywhere to research when things actually peak. And what I would recommend, I always recommend three months before the peak to make sure you have everything published and you wanna make sure by the time you're about a month out, you're ready with your social media content, you're ready to promote that page because that's when people are gonna be start being more interested in Wicker Easter baskets. So this year, Easter falls on April 4th. So by March 4th, you should be ready to really amplify your content, whether it's creating custom Pinterest pins, creating a YouTube video, creating custom social media content for Facebook or Twitter, wherever you need to promote your content based on whatever works best for your brand or your business. Now, the other thing I would recommend using is the Google Keyword Planner, and that's gonna allow you to find more ideas outside of just maybe one specific holiday or event. So we're gonna come over to the Google Keyword Planner and we're gonna to have to exit out of here for beach chairs. We'll just do a new search up top. And usually what I'll do is pick out some of the major holidays. So let's say Wicker Christmas. And I'm just gonna use the keyword Wicker and Christmas and we're gonna see what we can come up with. We're gonna do Wicker Halloween. We're gonna do Wicker Easter. We'll do Wicker Thanksgiving. You can do something like Wicker New Year's. Now, obviously this isn't all gonna work for Wicker, but I would recommend just looking it up because you never really know what people are searching for. So we'll do Wicker Valentine's Day. I could do something like Wicker Super Bowl, but I don't really think there's too much there. We'll search it anyway, why not? We get, we get 10 here. We'll do Wicker 4th of July. I don't know if really any of these are gonna come up with too much. And then maybe we'll do Wicker Holiday and we'll do Wicker Gift. Okay, so we could use those. You can also do something like Wicker Birthday or just use some of these major holidays here, whether it's Halloween, Christmas, Labor Day, 4th of July. Use some of the major holidays to try to find additional keywords for your business. So all you really need to do is enter this short seed keyword. So for example, all I did was enter Farmhouse Christmas, did get results, and then I just looked at what had the top search volume. And that's really where I focused on creating content to take advantage of that search volume with my website. So we'll click on get results and see what we got. Scroll down here, you can see really not too much here for Wicker. We can look by average monthly searches. So not a ton here. Wicker Easter baskets is really the biggest thing. So that's what I need to optimize for. I don't think even if I started early, I would be able to rank too well for that yet. But you can see here, Wicker Christmas tree skirt, Christmas tree Wicker basket wicker christmas tree so there's a keyword that i can start optimizing for and what i could do it's march right now so if i create content now then by the time the holiday season rolls around i should be fully ranked i should be able to promote this page much easier so this is how you find some different ideas and for wicker there's really not a ton in terms of seasonality if we look at wicker furniture here you can see it really peaks in may and there's plenty of search volume in june july and even before that in april so that's really where you want to make sure you're optimized for when you're looking at seasonality and seasonal trends 
It's a little bit different than looking at holidays because wicker furniture is not something people are looking for during the holiday season at all. And we actually saw a pretty bad January because most people aren't looking for a ton of wicker furniture in December and January. So coming back over here, that's how you can research holiday and event keywords for your business. You can also look at what some of your competitors do. Now, there's not always gonna be opportunities depending on your industry. There's certain things that are just set up perfectly for holidays like Christmas, like Thanksgiving. For example, I always think recipes. So if we come over here to Food Network real quick, St. Patrick's Day just passed, and you can see our best St. Patrick's Day recipes. They have the same for Valentine's Day, for 4th of July, for the Super Bowl, for Thanksgiving, for Halloween, for Christmas. So they have all sorts of different holidays and different reasons people would plan parties, and they base all of their recipe lists off of those holidays, which makes sense because people are always searching for these types of foods and recipes during specific times of the year. So this is just basically evergreen seasonal content that they have. So all they need to do is make sure they update this list every so often, and they can update it several months before St. Patrick's Day is coming, and they're ranked at the very top of Google, so you know they're going to get plenty of traffic on this specific page, and then they can drive it to all of these different recipes on their website. So that's really a great example of how to use seasonal content, and it does, again, it doesn't work for every single business. So if you have a recipe website, you should be doing this, but for your specific website, there might not be that many opportunities there. So Wicker Guide, the main thing I have is Wicker Easter Baskets. That's gonna be the largest thing for my website when it comes to holidays and events. So coming over to number two, I would highly recommend planning your end of year holiday strategy in the summer. So what you're gonna do from October 1st to January 1st, every single promotion you're gonna run, every single page you need created on your website, because you want them all there before September. You wanna make sure you have everything published by August, because that's gonna help you take advantage of Halloween traffic, Thanksgiving traffic, Christmas traffic, Hanukkah traffic, New Year's traffic. So all of these different things that people are searching on Google for, you wanna make sure that you're published by August, then you can also promote on social media much easier. Now, last but not least, number three, make sure you research seasonal trends for your most popular keywords. So I just went over wicker furniture before, really in the spring and into the summers when most people are looking for wicker furniture so they can take advantage of the weather when it's at its nicest. In the winter, people aren't thinking about wicker furniture as much because they're just not thinking about going outside as much. Now, once the spring and summer roll around, people are ready to go outside. People wanna have furniture on their patio. So you wanna make sure you research a lot of those seasonal trends for your most popular keywords. Now, once you have a keyword, let's say in my example, it's going to be Wicker Easter Baskets here. We have our Google search for it, so we can use keywords everywhere to find long tail keywords. I can also just come over to the Google Keyword Planner and we'll enter Wicker Easter Baskets here. This is generally what I'll do. I would say the three main sources that I use are the Google Keyword Planner. I will use Google and Keywords Everywhere. And then I'll also use Google Images a lot because it works the best for my type of businesses with beachfront decor, farmhouse goals, and in this case, Wicker Guide, where I can search Wicker Easter Baskets and I can find a lot of long tail keyword variations, wholesale, personalized, white, girl, boys, natural, small, plastic, liner, extra large, and I can use those to essentially create an outline for my blog posts and all of the different things I need to put in my buying guide for Wicker Easter Baskets. So if we come back over here to the Keyword Planner, usually where I'll start, and you can see the trends here, so you can see April 2019, major peak. You can see here March 2020, and then into April 2020, major peak, and you can see the same thing here. So during August, September, October, I'm not gonna get much traffic on this page at all, so it's really just a seasonal keyword. Now what I could have done is back in November and December, created this page of content and create this buying guide so then I'd be able to take advantage of it right now. But at that time I really started, was just creating content in November. So I wanted to start with my most popular keywords rather than starting with seasonal keywords. But once you kind of have a lot of your most popular keywords published, that's when you want to start finding some different topics and seasons that you can really amplify your website for. So we have Wicker Easter Baskets here. We're gonna scroll down. They give me 14 keyword ideas, so that's perfect. And you can see what have the most in terms of long tail keywords for average monthly searches. So what people are searching for the most. So now what I can do is create a Wicker Easter Baskets blog post, and then I can really focus on some of these long tail keyword variations as well. In this case, I would just create one blog post instead of creating something separate for White Wicker Easter Baskets, Wicker Bunny, Wicker Easter Basket with Liner. I just want one long form page. So we're gonna come over to our website here and what I'll do usually is start with a blog post 
or start with a product category. In this case, I'm gonna start with a product category. So if we come over to our product categories, Okay, and if we come over here, you can see I have wicker baskets and all of my subcategories here. So I don't have one yet for wicker Easter baskets. So that's what we're gonna create now. Okay, so we have the name of the category. We have the URL friendly version, slug for the category. We have our parent category set as wicker Easter or wicker baskets. We have our description, our thumbnail. So we're gonna add a new category. And then generally what I do is go over to Amazon and start adding products to that category. So in this case, I'm using a I'm using WooZone and WooCommerce. If you haven't been following the series all along, you might be confused by what, what I'm doing right now. But usually what I'll do, Wicker Easter Basket. So I'll add a couple here. So we'll take this one right here. We'll open this link in a new tab. And then if I can come if I come over here, I can choose my website for where I want to import it. I'm importing it into wickerguide.com. And then we just need to find our category from the list. So if we scroll down, you can see Wicker Easter Baskets right here. We'll click on that and we can just click right here to add the product. So that's gonna add this right to our website. So then what I can do is open up other pages. So we'll start with this one. I'm just gonna add two products for right now and we'll come over here. It's automatically gonna default to Wicker Easter Baskets. So I'll scroll over and show you anyway. But you can see here, it'll automatically default. We open it up import this product into this category as well. So in addition to the product category where I try to add every relevant high quality product on Amazon that I think would fit within that specific category. So for example, if I scroll down here, I wouldn't add this because it's not wicker. I could add this one. This would make for a great wicker basket. I probably wouldn't add this one. I probably wouldn't add this one. So I just try to find the best possible baskets that people can use for Easter. All of these would be good options right here. So what I can do is come back over to my website. I have a couple products in this category now. We'll refresh my product category page. And you can see if I scroll down here a little bit, you can see Wicker Easter Baskets. Now we have the two products we just added into this category. So what I would do next, now I'd probably keep adding more products, but what I'm gonna do in this video is come over to my post and I'm gonna add a new post. Now for this one, there's some different options I can use. One thing I wanna show you is what I like to do is look at what is already ranking high in Google for specific keywords you're trying to rank for. So if we come over, we search Wicker Easter Baskets in Google, we come down, so Amazon, Michaels, these all look like e-commerce listings. So on Michaels, it's gonna be just a bunch of Easter baskets in an e-commerce format, keep scrolling down. So we have AmishBaskets.com, we have Etsy.com, we have WorldMarket.com, Wayfair.com, PotteryBarnKids.com. So you can see some different ideas and what is already ranking on the first page. Obviously a lot of really great brands. And the main thing that's ranking is gonna be the e-commerce version of that page. So that's why I have to make sure I have a really good e-commerce version. But what I can do over here is do something like 101 Wicker Easter Baskets. So I could do something like that and create a list with just 101, which is actually a lot, but 101 best wicker Easter baskets. And that allows me to promote it a little bit better. For right now, I'm just gonna name this best wicker Easter baskets. We'll see how many we have and we can always adjust it as we go. So best wicker Easter baskets, I'll edit this, get rid of the best here. So it's just the keyword I wanna rank for. Click on okay. And now what I would do is I'm really trying to create a buying guide. I've said that a couple times, but if we come over here, we're gonna to go to the keywords everywhere and look for our long tail keywords. So I'm just gonna take all of these keywords right here and we're gonna copy them. We're gonna come over here and we're gonna paste them. And then the other thing I wanna do is come over to the Google Keyword Planner and we're gonna do the same exact thing. But this usually I'll just kind of enter manually just because it's gonna, if I copy them, it's gonna be all of these or you can download the keyword ideas. So these I'm gonna enter manually and I'm gonna start with the highest search volume keywords and then I'm gonna take the two lists and basically combine them to come up with the best long tail keyword variations that I wanna rank for. Okay, so these at the top are the best keywords from the Google Keyword Planner that I wanna expand on a little bit more in this article. Now the rest, I'm not gonna have anything with wholesale, so this with liner will work, but I already have the keyword up at the top here. So we'll just get rid of a few of these wicker Easter baskets with handles. So we'll keep that one, get rid of Canada, Target, Michaels. We already have personalized up at the top. So we'll get rid of that. We'll get rid of Amazon. So we have these two here. We have personalized. So we'll get rid of all of these. Okay. So we're going to use most of these here. So we'll go through the list a little bit more. So wicker bunny Easter baskets. I'm actually going to replace wicker bunny with wicker bunny Easter baskets. So we have a pretty good list here. Now what I would try to do is list relevant products for sale for all of these subcategories that people are generally looking for. Now something like white wicker Easter baskets with handle, that 
is there white wicker Easter baskets is plenty and wicker Easter baskets with handles is plenty. So we don't need to break it down too much. So the rest should be good that we can start writing a little bit about every single topic here. Now, this is where I'm pretty much going to end the video, but just to kind of give you an idea of how to take advantage of seasonal content and how to understand what people are searching for when it comes to your seasonal content so that you can create buying guides and take advantage of some of these peaks in search volume throughout the year. Now, it's definitely worth it. I can tell you with beachfront decor doing beach chairs, this year I'm incorporating a lot more beach towels, beach bags, beach accessories, and I'm gonna to continue to optimize for beach chairs. So all of these, my goal is to keep driving more and more clicks every year. And that should be your goal when you're creating seasonal content. With beachfront decor this year, I'm gonna create a large holiday buying guide. With farmhouse goals, I'm gonna do the same exact thing. So best farmhouse products during the holidays or something like 101 farmhouse decor products you need this Christmas. So using some different keywords like that and creating these buying guides, it's really good content for social media and it's a great way to rank higher in Google as well. And that's really my goal is to make sure I'm continuing to drive more and more clicks from Google every single year back to my websites because that's what's gonna help me drive more sales to Amazon and other affiliates. So what I generally do as I'm adding products is I just add everything into my Wicker Easter Baskets product category. And what I'm going to start doing is doing more subcategories for white Wicker Easter Baskets. So when I do add, let's say, this basket right here, maybe one of these baskets right here, I can take these and say, okay, these are also in the white Wicker Easter Baskets category. So the more chances I have to rank on Google for some of these different pages, the better I can kind of optimize for some of these long tail keywords, the more traffic I'm ultimately gonna drive because it's gonna be really hard to rank above a lot of these main competitors you're seeing here. So things like Etsy, World Market, Wayfair, Amazon, Pottery Barn Kids, they have huge teams working on their SEO, working on the products on their website. So for me, working by myself, it's a little more difficult to rank higher than all of these different large businesses that also have their own products for sale. So me just being an affiliate website, I really need to make sure that I'm focusing on these long tail keywords and creating the best possible experience for people who are looking for wicker Easter baskets. I wanna make sure someone comes to my website, they can easily find, let's say a small wicker Easter basket and they can purchase it and without any issues at all. So that's ultimately my goal to make sure I'm ranking high. Now I'm gonna keep going through and creating this buying guide. This will actually turn into another video in this series, but for right now, I just kinda of wanted to go over some seasonal content. So going through our main takeaways, start with seasonal keyword research, find the most popular keywords for holidays, social media holidays, and events for your business. So depending on what your business are, you might be able to take advantage of the summer, the winter, the fall, or specific holidays. So if you're maybe an alcohol business, you probably try to take advantage of the 4th of July. You probably try to take advantage of Labor Day. You probably try to take advantage of the Super Bowl. But it's gonna be different for someone who's selling furniture like me. Now plan your holiday marketing strategy early. The last thing you want is to be in October or November trying to think about what you're gonna be doing for Black Friday and what you're gonna be doing for the holiday season. So make sure you plan that strategy early. Get all of your content published and optimized as early as possible. Last but not least, take advantage of seasonal trends. So people are searching for wicker furniture during the spring and summer. So I wanna make sure I have a really good buying guide for wicker outdoor furniture right now. So when people are in April and May, searching for what types of wicker furniture they could buy, what types of wicker cushions they can buy, I can make sure that I'm front and center on Google, on things like Pinterest to make sure I'm driving people to my website. So. It's a really good way to take advantage of seasonality is to start with seasonal keyword research, holiday keyword research, try to find trends and make sure you're optimizing early. Now, if you're late, in this case like I am, I'm late with Wicker Easter Baskets, there's nothing wrong with creating that content right now and then by next year I can be fully optimized and ready to rank as high as possible on Google, getting people to my buying guide and driving more sales than I did last year. So thank you for watching my video today. Make sure you subscribe to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel and please ask any questions you have in the comments section.